Hello, everyone. My name is Catherine Wang. I work for Azure Developer Platform, focusing on diagnostics. And today, we plan to talk to you about production diagnostics uh, in Azure. Now, my personal background, I have a ton of experience um, being the on-call guy for developer teams. I used to develop a lot of code for um, medical industry and for, uh, for, for banking services. Uh, but I'd be the guy you would want on your team who's going to be called at 3 o'clock in the morning. I'm the guy who's ensuring no one else gets bothered. And obviously, you get called twice at that late an hour. And the next question you're asking, what can we do to improve our code? Um, I've done this for years. And so Catherine's here is going to show me a lot about how to do this in Azure. Um, I'm used to kind of uh, event counters. I'm used to looking at event, event viewer and performance counters. And hopefully, I can get a sense of how to do this in the Azure cloud. Well, so, uh, Mark, I just uh, developed a new app. And I hope you help me to be on call for okay. a few days. Yeah. Let's take a look at the app. OK. All right. So this is an app that takes pizza orders. Um, the front end is written in Node.js. It was very smooth to get non-Donet working in Azure. The back end in ASP.NET Core, it takes the customer orders and dispatches the orders at scale. Um, the Dapper component we see okay. on each uh, of the app, um, Dapper stands for Distributed Application Runtime. So uh, this runs as a set of cards to take care of critical microservice building blocks, such as PubSub, Binding, State Store, and so on. And uh, by running Dapper, I can freely switch the implementation of that component. Right now, I'm using Azure Service Bus. Maybe I decide to use RabbitQ and others. Uh, I don't have to change my code. Um, the .NET Monitor component is what Mark will talk more about later. It helps deeply diagnose this app. So this is the pizza app uh, we are looking at today. It's deployed in Azure Container Apps platform. Azure Container Apps support infrastructure as code uh, through Bicep and YAML. So uh, this is an example of my deployment YAML file. I can specify the environment I'm deploying into, the container spec, like uh, what is the container and uh, other settings associated with it, and I need additional containers, such as a diagnostics sidecar. Management operations are supported through Azure CLI. And I can easily hook up a GitHub action to automate the entire build and pipeline. For example, I am pushing my code live right now. And as my code is pushed from local to my GitHub, a pipeline action is automatically started. So you did your development on Windows. You just submitted a, rec a, a, a push of code changes. And you've kicked off your container to completely build and deploy. And we're good to go, right? Correct, and it's built to deploy in Azure Linux containers. So, so I'm old enough to remember when I used to deploy using zip files. I'm giving my age away. There may be a couple of gray-haired folk here who would probably remember that. But you're saying that's done with. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Correct. OK, loving it. OK. Cool. So now let's uh, just play around with the app. I can add some pizza into my shopping cart, create an order. And I can check for my order status. Oh, it's not returning everything. Sorry, um, unexpected. So I broke. know. We've broken it already. OK. Maybe someone broke it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so okay. Good. No, let's go for it. Let's, let's go through this. Yeah, so let's take a look at how to troubleshoot this. Um, one of the popular tools our customers go to is diagnose and solve problems. This is the first stop to triage any app or infrastructure issues. Um, so just uh, to show, I was in the app portal, and the diagnose and solve problems is available in the navigation menu. How much does this cost? Must be 
Zero. Okay, okay, okay. Doing my little self. That's my favorite part. <laughs> okay. Um, I go to availability and the performance because my app wasn't working. This will run a list of standard checks um, to let me know if there are HTTP errors, if there were infrastructure failures, and so on. And here, okay, I see it's telling me there was a 500 error, and it gives me recommendations on my next steps. So it's not only telling me what's wrong, but it tells me how to proceed, how to troubleshoot. Okay, cool. This is pointing me to the logs, and it gave me even a sample of pre-built query, so I know where to start. Excellent. So if I were on call, this was back in 2005, Right. I was on call. I would have to figure out, I'd have to come in, figure out exactly which server was being impacted by the outage. I would have a D drive logs where my app would be sending stuff to. I'd have to figure out exactly which app was being impacted. But I think what you're telling me here is that this is kind of giving me a signal of which, which log file or which essentially which uh, location to go look for the error in, right? That's right. Okay. So Azure Container Platform will send all the logs to a centralized location. Huh. So it won't be like you dig around for log files for hours and then realizing you are in the wrong server. Got it. So um, Custo interface allow me to search and correlate for the information I was looking for. In this case, if I run for the log, So I can see the output um, from my container app. And it's not only the current app I'm looking at, but also the bank backend app, for example, the process HTTP huh. to correlate for anything. And in this case, I think I'm seeing a log saying, failed to fetch order status error get address info. Um, let me just uh, expand this, zooming in so we can take a closer look. Uh, failed to fetch for other status. Uh, log here uh, has like is showing by default latest uh, 24 hours. But if I was in dev test environment, I know the error just happened. There is a shortcut um, in my container app portal. There is an option for log stream that directly shows me the latest happening within that app. Oh, cool. So we, I've got logs, which kind of gives me a historical context. So I can go back and look at any particular moment in time. But then if I want to see what actively is failing at this particular moment, I can go to log streams. Exactly. This, this works. Yeah. So here I'm seeing consistent in the message um, is the wrong address. I wonder why, because my app was just working yesterday, and now it's a failing. <laughs> Did that push you just a bit? This is a... This is a uh, new tool we just uh, shipped in Azure Monitor called Change Analysis. Okay. It shows me what changed in my past application, network settings, and the resource config. It runs at a scale and secure, powered by Azure Resource Graph. It has no additional cost or performance impact to your okay. apps. So here, see, I'm seeing some environment changed in my app. And it shows me the old and the new values. Maybe at one wow. glance, I can't really tell what exactly is the diff. So let me click into this particular change to investigate more. So this is the part of the investigation at night where I would be looking at the change notes. I'd be trying to figure out what the developers installed, what they decided, what, well, you know, what instructions they gave to the person who actually is the DevOps person, and you're telling me, actually, I can tell you exactly what they did because that information is right here. Correct. Yeah, exactly. It is a centralized list huh. showing what changed in your environment and application. Um, as teams get really large, it could be very hard to identify who made a change and how the change was made. So this helps us to understand what's going on and shorten the troubleshooting time. So this diff view here, I like it. It's showing me the highlighted changes. Seems like someone just made a typo. Um, view for context give me more 
understanding into the exact arm snippet. So in case I want to mitigate like a quick rollback, this can be very helpful. Excellent. So as my app gets more serious, I want to proactively monitor it. Um, Azure Manager Grafana provides a single pin of observability into what's happening in your apps and environment. We partnered with Grafana Labs and delivered this fully hosted experience. It's integrated with Azure Active Directory, works with all Azure resources out of box, and you can go to the community uh, dashboard template repository to download dashboard template and make this effortless to work. So here is showing me um, some basic metrics and uh, what I should know about for my container apps. So this is a single dashboard with all the health and potential problems that my app might be encountering. I can see this over time, right? Correct. It tells me what I should care about. Okay, nice. As our, la our app uh, goes larger, we care about the performance. So um, Azure Monitor Application Insights provide summary on the performance and the failures of the application. Let's see how our app was doing in the past. OK, in, in this graph, I'm already seeing some requests taking longer than two seconds. So it's not good. Anything longer than half a second will be noticeable. And we do not want our customers to churn because they were waiting, experiencing glitchiness in the browser. They need their pizza quickly. Correct. <laughs> um, and I care about the really slow request. So let's go to the 99th percentile. This is showing me the long tail, like basically the outliers, the request that's taking really long time to finish. And I'm seeing 7.61 seconds. Oh, that's awful. Let me take a look at um, which part of this request was slow. Like in a microservice environment, multiple components will be handling the same request as the request propagate. So distributed tracing shows me exactly like how long each part took and I can figure out which part slowed down my app. So it seems like this app uh, is taking a, sorry, this request was taking a long time to finish, but each component did not take a long time to execute. I wonder it might be waiting for something or just logged. Interesting, so while, our, while the overall request took a long time, you're able to look at this kind of get a sense for where the problem might be. And you're not getting a sense necessarily that it's in the app, but it's some kind of waiting that's going on, right? Correct. Okay. And I can double confirm that with the App Insights Profiler. Um, this shows me if anything within the code was slowing down my app, or maybe it was just uh, waiting for something. And in this case, it's saying a wait time. Yeah. Um, just another tool I wish to introduce to you. This profiler trace, while it tells us a lot of information, it might be for the experts to interpret. And we want to provide a good performance debugging tool for everyone to use. So we apply the machine learning on top of the profiler traces to tell you anything happening in the code that's slowing down your app. This is in private preview right now. And these are the sign-up links. Well, so we've got first-class tracing opportunities inside the app, inside, your, inside the container right now. That's really, really cool. Right. Um, so now, Mark, sorry, I, I saw this app was waiting for something, but not within my app code. What to do now? Right. This is where I think I'd like to kind of talk about, um, historically, when we've kind of got to the end of logs, when we've got to the end of, of maybe um, metrics, how you may want to take a trace of an application. You've kind of exhausted all the possibilities and the permutations of your debugging, and you've said, hey, I want to take a trace of something, or I want to take a memory dump possibly of something. And so um, I wanted to kind of go back to the architectural diagram just for a second. And um, Catherine earlier talked about this idea of .NET Monitor. 
.NET Monitor is a diagnostics sidecar. Now, we talked diagnostics sidecars are essentially, they don't have a, a, a role to play in the specific action of your application. They're there designed specifically to help you diagnose problems along the way. Now, as I've come out of a Windows development background, I use .NET and, um, and all the iterations from 2003 about. Um, so we went through, and this time we had a ton of tools to help me collect traces and dumps, but that was always Windows bound. And for those of you who are thinking about diagnostics in a container, kind of containerized environment, um, some of these tools you may be missing, and what .NET Monitor provides is, is a way to kind of collect traces and dumps, even in containerized environments. You don't have to discard maybe the expertise you've picked up in those Windows-based environments, and .NET Monitor can sit there as a diagnostics sidecar. So, um, Mark, you just mentioned that this is a diagnostics sidecar, so how does it know anything about your app? All right, so just take a quick look on the left-hand side, so this is our application. And we've got .NET Monitor as the sidecar, right? And this kind of arrow, two-way arrow, is kind of designated. Um, the CLR for your .NET applications, regardless of where they're running, are always talking to something called the diagnostics port. It's kind of like a chat where your app is chatting to it constantly. And it's telling, it, telling the diagnostics port about the health of your app. Now, there's probably no one listening in the chat, unfortunately. But .NET Monitor is literally listening. So actually, I'm going to jump across just for a second to the YAML file, just that, that, that Catherine was just sharing a second ago. And here's her, here's her container. And you'll notice I've defined two volume mounts called Diagnostics Port. This is the Diagnostics Port, literally. And your app will talk to the Diagnostics Port. And in Linux, that's uh, Unix domain sockets. In, on Windows, that's um, uh, uh, named pipes, right? It's the same concept, it's just constantly talking, but frankly, there's rarely anyone listening. But .NET Monitor is. And because .NET Monitor is listening, let me just jump back over to the slide. Um, because it's listening, I can tell you things about the health of your app. I can tell you what's on your GC, the size of your GC. I can tell you how many times um, GC requests are gone, how much CPU time your process, is, is your, your process is taking. I can tell you things about your thread pool stacks. .NET Monitor takes that data, and makes it available via the control plane, and that's just simply a RESTful API. So I can go to the metrics endpoint and get a bunch of data about my app in the Prometheus exposition format, and, or I could get it simply as a JSON download and get a bunch of data about my app. So, so Mark, sorry, uh, is yeah, no, this please. secure? Um, this is just like another layer of the diagnostic story, right? So you started off with logs, you know about the metrics of your infrastructure, Right, um, but, but you don't necessarily know about the metrics of your application. So this is just another opportunity to get a bit more data. I kind of like the uh, Sherlock Holmes quote. He says, data, 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 I cannot make bricks without clay. This is just like another brick to help you think about making good hypothesis about the problems that you're seeing. I'm actually going to jump across to the Azure portal now. I just want to show you what that control plane looks like if you're trying to, 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 to actually grab a trace or maybe see a bit more data. What's this fancy tool? Okay, so this is actually, so we're using Azure Container Apps. So if this were AKS, I think this is the, probably the closest comparison I can think of. If this were AKS, you'd probably be sitting at kubectl and you would making the, you know, you'd be sudoed in and you'd be making your calls, you'd be SSHing in. Um, this kind of experience is emulated within um, the Azure portal for ACA. And so I'm sitting at a command line. I've already installed curl. And so I know that there's two, essentially, if we go back and look at our YAML file again, we've got two images. We've got my app. We've got .NET Monitor. And I want to talk to .NET Monitor. And I'm going to do so via HTTP. And I'm going to go ahead and get to localhost. And I'm going to 52323. And I'll show you why I've defined that. If I jump back over to the YAML here, you'll see I've defined .NET Monitor at that particular port. So I'm going to ask it, give me a list of the processes. And anybody who has basically created that diagnostics port has been telling, telling us that you're there, essentially. So any app you have, if that's part of your container, that's part of your actual pod, they can all be talking to the diagnostics port. And we can use .NET Monitor to say who's out there 
and get a list of things. And then we can start to, to start a diagnostic session on the particular .NET process that is running, okay? Let me go ahead and clear that. So one of the things that I can do is collect a GC dump, which is essentially looking at the heap, the .NET heap. I can then define an egress, egress provider and call that, I've defined already in my YAML file. And, and so I've, what I've basically done there is said, actually, let me make sure this, make that correct. So what I should have done is just right now, so that was, this, is my, this is my Azure storage. What I've just did was say, get a GC dump and send it to this Azure storage lo location I've defined. Okay, so if I refresh this and the demo gods are kind, I should get a GC dump there. So I've, basically what I've done is I've, I've, I've walked up to our service. The, the pizza customers are complaining that they cannot get their pizza orders in. I've said, let me capture something right now to get a sense of what's going on. And that could be a GC dump. That could be a dump. That could be a trace. Um, that could be just pulling metrics out. And I can ingest those, that, that data into any other pipeline I need, maybe to help me. Um, the Prometheus, for example, the Prometheus um, screen that was shown earlier, we do have a Prometheus, sorry, the Grafana screen we were shown earlier, we have a Prometheus exposition format, so you could constantly stream metrics, not just about your infrastructure, your pod, your VM, but you can also give um, a constant stream of data related to your application. You can make causal relationships then between what's going on. If things start slowing down, uh, it might be your VM, it might be the network, but you can actually literally see how your application is responding. I really like the fact that we can export it to a storage account. If we have a team of right. on-call um, teammates, we can share these dumps. Exactly. So what, what, that's a really, really great point. You don't have to have all the answers when I'm on call. Usually I was trying to just, I was trying to get back to sleep as quickly as possible. So restarting was an option for me every single time. But I also wanted to get enough evidence so that we could continue this investigation a little bit further, right? And so having secure storage is a great way to kind of get through that, okay? All right. Um, so that's me collecting things right now. Um, the other, hopefully, the other thing you might want to think about is collecting things when the problem's occurring, right? So now that I am exporting these metrics in a format I understand, I can probably set up a strategy that allows me to collect things just when I need them. So if the issue is occurring at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm going to, I want to want to set up a trigger to collect the thing I need at that moment in time, right? So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our YAML file here. So you don't have to be watching the screen and <laughs> manually taking the dump. Right, right. I, I, I would hate for that to be the case. So here I have over here a trigger rule. What you can do with .NET Monitor is define a trigger, a collection rule, right? So you can define how I want to trigger the collection rule. So I can say, okay, if the CPU and this process is causing the CPU to spike this much, I want you to collect a memory dump for me. I only want you to do it twice and I want you to store it here, right? Or I can say, hey, if too many GC per seconds are happening, I want you to collect a memory dump, or I want you to collect a trace, and I want you to, to do this only five times over the next 24 hours maximum. Either way, I can set up a set of rules that will help me collect enough artifacts to kind of think about how I'm going to solve this problem. So here I have, in this instance, I have a trigger type based on the event counters, and I'm asking it to look at the system runtime. And I actually want you to look at the thread pool queue length. This is an indication of how much work is waiting to be executed, right? Not actually how much work I'm executing, how, many work, how much work I'm queuing to be worked on, which is probably an indicator of some other problem, which is why I think this is a helpful one for the problem that, that, that Catherine kind of alerted us to earlier. And I essentially want to say, if that thread pool queue length is greater than 60, we know we have a problem, and if it's that long for 20 seconds, go ahead and collect a dump. But I don't want you to continue to do this. I want you to just collect it just five times tops, then just stop. Just deactivate the whole rule, okay? And so, in fact, I have, in fact, done that. Um, if you probably saw earlier when I was at the previous page, I'd collected a couple of dumps. I collected one yesterday, actually, in this scenario. So I, 
There was a bunch of folks, I guess, wanting to get our fa fantastic pepperoni pizza, and uh, they caused, they had a whole bunch of queuing. <laughs> and let me go ahead and look at that. So probably one of the things you're thinking about right now is the fact that I collected that on a Linux machine. That's the dump I downloaded earlier today, oh yeah, well, yesterday, right? Collected this on a Linux machine. What are we going to do with this now? I'm on a Windows 11 device. Well, since about w Visual Studio 16.8, we've had the ability to open up Linux core dumps, right? So if it's, and in fact, that works for both managed and for native dumps as well. So if you've got to the point where you're in your debugging and you need to open traces, they will do so cross-platform. If you need to, GC dumps were, were um, by definition a cross-platform format, so you should be good with those, but dumps also open just fine. So let me go ahead and show you that. That's really nice. So we can develop and debug using our uh, any preferred workstation like Windows, and it runs in Linux in Azure. Exactly. It doesn't matter where you decide to develop. It doesn't matter where you decide to deploy. We're going to be able to, to kind of think about the diagnostic journey. Um, this is because our... Um, Framework is cross-platform, right? Exactly that, yep. So you'll notice, thank you. <laughs> so you'll notice I don't have an extension for this because dumps don't naturally have extensions. You can put one on if you want to when you're collecting it, but that's neither here nor there. The dump doesn't need an extension. We recognize it and we open it up as a Linux core dump. So now uh, here I am about to start dump debugging. I'm just going to do a little bit on dump debugging. Not all of you need this, but this is kind of where I get excited about stuff. So um, I'm going to debug with managed only. This is a managed dump. I'm going to start the debugging session. So what's in a managed dump? In a managed dump is all the, it, I actually configured this to take a full dump. There's different types of dumps I could take. I took a full dump. I wanted all the stacks. I wanted the heap. I wanted the threads. I just wanted everything, basically. So I asked for a full dump, right? Um, th there's different types of dumps you can take depending on the kind of investigation you're starting. And you notice now, I, it looks like I'm kind of sitting at a breakpoint. Whatever moment was happening in, in production, this is it. Now, this may not be useful to you because taking a memory dump isn't like setting a breakpoint. I don't know exactly where it stopped. So I tend to take a huge step back when I'm looking at memory dumps. Like, let's not worry about the line of code that I'm resting on. Let's just think about the big picture things that are going on inside this memory dump. So I'm actually going to use the parallel stacks window, and you can get to that by using the debug, windows, and parallel stacks view. And right now, it's going to start fetching the threads that were running when this me memory dump was taken, right? And I've told you already that we kind of we've taken this dump because there was a lot of queuing going on, right? So I'm kind of curious what was happening actually being executed, even though we had things queuing up for the dump, right? So I'm going to see what things are actively the most. So this is, I'm going to, in the bottom right hand side, you'll see a map. This is just a visual representation of the entire dump. So I'm kind of just doing a quick scan and looking for the thing that is taking up the most threads. And in this instance, it's this dealio here. It's 56 threads we're doing. It doesn't sound like a lot but we already have queuing, which is a problem. So I'm going to zoom in here a little bit because I want to dig in on this part. All right. So I recognize some of the frames here, some of the code here I recognize. Azure Storage Service, that looks like something you've written. I'm recognizing Pizza Order Controller, again, something we've written. And then I've got a kind of a, a frame kind of telling me about something changing. So this is all this below this point are asynchronous calls. But above this point, I'm seeing task.result. Task anybody kind of, has anybody kind of clued into what might be happening here? This is kind of a bit obscure, but I'm hoping somebody maybe. Like, yep, yeah, thank you. So thank you so much. So what's actually happening here, I've got asynchronous code up to this point, And now I'm synchronously waiting on the top of that. This is bad. This is very, very, very bad. Um, so. You don't want to do this. Think of everything you have as a resource, whether it's CPU, whether it's memory, whether it's I.O. They're all resources. And in this instance, thread pool threads are another resource. You only have so much of them, so many allocated to you. You can request more, but you also want to make sure you are requesting more in an efficient way. 
right? And this is not the efficient way to do this. The problem with this is that this can sneak up on you and get past your tests locally because it won't show up until you're running at scale. Yeah, okay? when I was testing my app locally, I didn't even notice this type of problem. And it may just happen for a few seconds in Proud. Now we can capture it and debug. Exactly awesome. that. In fact, I want to kind of take this a little step further so you can recognize these patterns. I, 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 I ask you to kind of check out the parallel stacks window if you think it's a process responsiveness issue. Check out the memory issue. If it's a memory issue, we have also have a, a memory view, um, and you can, can uh, filter by generation. But I also want to let you know about one other tool we've been working on recently called Diagnostics Analysis. So again, go to the debug window. And just to be clear, all your tools in Visual Studio work. You're just looking at it from the other side. So your call stacks view, your watch window, you can use Quick Watch with a memory dump. All these tools work. You're just kind of looking at the problem from the other way around, if that makes sense. So Windows, and then jump down to Diagnostics Analysis. And what this tool is designed to do is to help you with memory dumps. Because it can be a little bit daunting, a little bit intimidating to start debugging a dump. It is. I, I will not even try to dissuade you of that idea. However, what we've been thinking about is what information in that dump would people want to look at? So we've got this an analysis tool. And I'm going to just start it running, because I know this is a process responsiveness issue that Catherine was kind of seeing. I'm going to run the anal analyzer. And so we are looking for different scenarios that we know might be problematic, or we know that we just think you'll need to have information on to make a good hypothesis, right? And so one of the things, for example, we've got deadlocks as one option in here. You know, thread A waiting on thread B, thread B then waiting on something owned by thread A. You're never going to recover. Right? But finding that in a memory dump, I don't know how many, peop how many people use WinDBG. Wow, that's, 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 that's actually pretty high proportion for this. But WinDBG is a great tool. If you want to know everything that's going on, WinDBG is the best. But you have to know the incantations, right? You have to get the incantations. And, and I absolutely, if that's your jam, that's the thing that you want to use, go for it. I just want to make it a little bit easier for everyday developers to kind of get started, right? So anyway, so I've, the analysis has stopped. So I'm going to scroll down now. And it's tried to kind of give me a clue of some of the things I might want to see. A couple, couple of those have big red X's on them, right? And they have these big red X's for good reason. So let me just select one and go look down a little bit more. That's one thread. That's the code, right? Yeah, exactly. So you're code recognizing your namespace again. <laughs> Your code here, it's basically saying the problem. 68 threads are performing asynchronous work. That's correct to what we saw in the parallel stacks window, but are waiting on a synchronous call to get results. OK, I'm going to just jump us over for those who aren't kind of really familiar with what sync over async is. Um, my good friend uh, David Fowler wrote an article on this, if I still have it open. He wrote an article about this in GitHub. I, urge you all, if you're doing anything with async, to have a look at this document. Um, I'll, I've got the links a, a little bit later. I'll show you. But check this out. If you're doing task.result in your code, so if you've got some asynchronous code and you're doing a dot .result or a dot .wait, you're probably doing it wrong. Uh, you, I, most of you, if some, I'm sure some of you have probably been fine until you hit that too much traffic moment. Right, And when you get to that too much traffic moment, and I'd just like to kind of bring your attention to where he says this particular statement. Again, if you're, if you're doing it this way, you're probably using two threads instead of one, which means that you're, as soon as you get a lot of traffic to your site, you get overwhelmed. The system possibly can't add enough new threads to deal with the request, which means you're going to get a thread pool queue, which means you're subsequently going to be get a bunch of timeouts and a bunch of slowdowns. But this is a great tool. If you've got to this point where you've got past metrics and you've got past logs, this is a great tool to kind of get you started helping you define new hypotheses. And it's also very important to optimize our code because that will directly incur more cost. Like, we don't want to be adding CPUs, adding memories all the time. Right. So optimizing our code will help us run everything more efficiently. And save money. So I'm going to go over across to here because I just want to see this code in action. I'm going to go to the modules window. 
and go find the module associated with that. I do have symbols here, so I'm going to decompile. So I can literally, de I'm decompiling from the dump I've collected, and that will allow me, now the, be the very best thing to do would be use source link, but I don't have a, I didn't have the demo for you for that, but I'm gonna show you the decompilation because I think that's cool. Um, so I've just decompiled that code. So I'm gonna jump back to now my analysis. I'm gonna select that again. And I'm going to click on the link that I had earlier. And now I'm sitting literally the line of code that's causing me problem all the way in production, right? It's found that anti-pattern. And this is where I was hoping I would get some applause, but that's OK. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> um, but it literally found that anti-pattern for me running at scale, right? Um, that Catherine thought she saw some metrics on. And I said, let me capture something and let me squirrel that away and let me go do some analysis and let me find, get my team involved. And we were able to run Visual Studio and get some informa additional information to make us, help us form this hypothesis. To fix this, it would be simply, I need to await rather than dot result, right? And that, and that is um, diagnostics analysis. Uh, that's super cool. So we went all the way from what's happening in the app, in the cloud, from monitoring, uh, triaging, deep analysis, and then identifying the line of code causing the problem. Exactly. Yes. All right. Q&A, is that all right? That sounds good. All right, cool. Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and heat this monitor up if it isn't already heated up. All right, it's not, so I'm going to come over here and look at your monitor. Interesting question here. Uh, Saying does um, does dot and monitor can dot and monitor work with other things sidecar to like Azure Functions or like how many things can have a sidecar and what can't? So the things we've we've actually run this against so far is AKS, ACA, just normal apps. Basically, as long go ahead and expand all your acronyms. Just okay, yeah, Azure Azure Kubernetes, um, Azure Container Apps. Um, we have you you could just run this on any Linux, for example, if they have a new update coming to. Azure App Services for Linux, where .NET Monitor is running as a sidecar. And so all of, the, um, all of the things you can do with Azure App Services for Windows, like get a dump or get a trace, we're going to be using .NET Monitor to do the similar things in Linux. So essentially, anywhere you can run a process side by side with your application, uh, you can have .NET Monitor running. Very interesting. Uh, another interesting question would be that uh, some people might say that, like, my job isn't to go this deep. So then the question is, we've got all these different roles. You know, we're at Microsoft Ignite. Some of us are devs, self-identified. Some of us are IT people, self-identified. And all the spectrum in between, at what point is like too deep? Like, should we all be able to do this? What kind of skill set is this? Yeah, I think you should stick to this abstraction layer that is comfortable for you until you absolutely need to get to the next one, right? So I think logs can fix 80% of your problems, right? And if that's the case, be successful with logs. But then as soon as you need to kind of upgrade and think about metrics and think about how your app is responding in a greater context, then, then you may want to think about how you can get performance monitoring in place. Um, and then when that fails you, then maybe it's time to start looking at what other tools are available. But whatever abstraction layer is, sits, sits well with you. For example, I'm not 100% confident with WinDBG, but there are folks that are, <laughs> and I'm happy to hand off once Visual Studio, once I can't find the problem within Visual Studio. Okay, and then Catherine, I remember at the very beginning you were saying that you were a big fan of the diagnose and solve problems. He said that logs will get you 80% of the way there, but I feel pretty good about diagnose and solve problems, and you said it was free. Correct, so uh, it goes with all our uh, past apps and uh, other resources uh, for in this particular Example, Azure Container Apps, it will run the checks for common HTTP errors, like 500, 400, as well as what's happening in your app um, infrastructure if anything like the node was down, um, underlying Kubernetes experiencing issues, bubbling up the problem. So that's the starting point for triaging any issues. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I think is really interesting about this kind of stuff and why I wanted to have our friends Mark and Catherine come and talk about us is uh, that a lot of us have been driving automatic shift. You, know, you go into Azure, you make the PaaS app, and it works just fine. And you don't think about it. But when you have to drop down to a layer a little bit lower, suddenly you're driving stick shift. Yep. 
And then the question is, well, when do you have to disassemble the car? Now, I just wanted to go for a morning ride. I just wanted to go out and take the family out for lunch. And now we're on the side of the road. I've taken apart the entire car. Uh, and I always wonder how far down to go. Like, like I see that we're in .NET code right now. Should I go to IL? So I really like your idea of, well, you go as far down as you're comfortable. Yep. yep. Maybe one layer to discomfort. But then if you don't need to, that's the whole point of layers of abstraction. Right? Exactly. Yeah, you could literally have this problem in your code and never come across it if it's not something that needs to run, um, run at scale, right? In which case, you don't need to fix this kind of problem, in which case you probably don't need to take a memory dump to find if you've got this kind of problem. So it's just wherever you are, and if you need to go a step further, we've got the tools to kind of help you. Yeah, and having those tools is really interesting because there was a question about but could you do this on things like IIS or local hosting and on on-prem, and at some point, this really is the value of the cloud. These yeah. things are not available unless you're running in the cloud, and there's some value to that. Yeah, totally. Yeah, absolutely. And then, did you have any thoughts about, um, you know, or you're on ACA, or you're on, you don't really care where this is running. I know, from my perspective, it's like, get the, get into the area that is comfortable for you, and we'll bring the tools to you, essentially. That's the kind of hope that we have here, is that the tools kind of match where you are deciding is the best fit for your application, and we use that, and, and we kind of bring the tools to you. I think that's just the best. best we, we did not build the tools specifically for the Azure container apps. Right. It just works with any other paths on Azure the same way we just showed you. That's a really great point. It works with any other paths, any other platform as a service. And then um, last question uh, we had from our online audience, are you, is anything that you showed here not released? Because people don't like seeing tools that are secret or magic or internal. The, the optimization insights where we apply machine learnings on top of the profiler traces, um, that one is a private preview, and we are looking for early sign-ups. Okay. Where can people go to learn about that? Maybe you could bring up that, and one of you, I see that Mark got his browser up. Let's go ahead and bring up our resources slide. This is a good opportunity for you to take a screenshot of your resources. We've got a bunch of AKA, also known as .ms links. You can learn about Azure Grafana, the change analysis, the container apps, Dapper, .NET Monitor, uh, and all these different things available very, very soon. Um, cool, so private preview and everything else is available. Correct, yes. Absolutely brilliant. Big hand for Mark and Catherine for their very hard work <laughs> teaching us how to do production debugging in Azure. Very, very cool stuff. All right, we're going to go take a short break, and we're going to have our final talk. We're going to have a gentleman from the C++ team, along with a new friend from Xbox Studios, that is going to be talking about C++ and games, which is going to be pretty cool. I want to encourage you, as always, to tweet this stuff. Tweets matter. Tweet at hashtag MSIgnite. We're looking at those. This is live. It's unscripted. And if you want more of this at other conferences, you got to do it because you got to tell the people. So if you got feedback, put it on a postcard. And then if you put this information in your session catalog, go to the session details for this session and others, fill out that evaluation form. Real humans like myself and Chloe will read those. But we're not going to throw them into a spreadsheet and never look at them. We will read every single word. Thank you very much. And we'll see you back here in about 15 minutes. Bye.